Web Show. I'm GW Palmisher. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in. If you haven't done it yet, we've got a little bit of time. We'll wait. Go on down and hit subscribe. Click the little bell so you can come back over and over again and see some fantastic. We got artists, authors, filmmakers, just fantastic creative arts professionals of all kinds here on the Hanging With Web Show. So don't forget to come back over and over again and check those out. Check our description down below for information about our partners as well as our guest today. We are here in the home studio. We are hanging with Karen Whiting, the author of Gift of Bread and Raising a Young Modern Day Princess. Thank you very much for coming out and hanging with oh, us. Thanks for having me, GW. Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you what, let's start with a little bit about your most recent books here. Uh, Gift of Bread, let's start with that. Yes, Gift of Bread is different from a cookbook, different from a devotional. It's a combination of a devotional cookbooks and so there's heartwarming well, so That's great because it's a devotional cook. I'm a devotional eater. So that's, that <laughs> devoted goes, to the food. Devoted <laughs> to the food that, that devotion cooks. Aha, see what we did right. there? Yes. So, um, where did the idea come from? Where did you get the idea to? to this do a is the book, book I always wanted to write. It took me 22 years to get the contract on it. But in the meantime, a lot of thoughts and ways to do it were kind of forming in my mind. Uh -huh. So that was really good. And part of it is, you know, I grew up with a family that had dairy farms, restaurant, even though my dad was an engineer. And I grew up cooking all the time, cooking with grandmothers, cooking at the restaurant, and loved bread had so many heartwarming stories around bread and also because my books have a Christian basis really liked the reading about bread in the Bible so wow. it's all combined into one book see that rising star <laughs> as the bread oh, rises God, that uh -huh. I know that hurt don't worry about <laughs> it guys um, it's, it's, it's really kind of cool about that you know um, anyone who grew up with their grandmother cooking and their mom cooking and baking and things like that the smell of bread baking in a house is probably just one of the most evocative things. How do yes. you paint that picture and paint that inspiration with words? Oh, it's really just talking about that aroma of bread as you pull the loaf out of the oven and giving those descriptions mm -hmm. of what the bread is like, whether I'm talking about Irish bread and there's a story in there that I talk about how I was... Uh, hiking on the Appalachian Trail with Girl Scouts with my husband and while we're hiking along it started raining and we found shelter and then we pulled out a loaf of Irish bread that was wrapped in foil and the kids just devoured it and then they were there sitting so sad because they didn't have more and then my <laughs> husband pulled a loaf out of his pack because I had actually made another loaf ah. and they were thrilled so you get that sense of hunger and then you get that sense of it being fulfilled Filled and you're satisfied because you have something. See, y'all on YouTube had no idea <laughs> that bread could be, and I, I'm not talking a little bit of devotion here. I'm talking, bread can be very inspirational. Anybody, <laughs> anybody that's ever smelled grandma cooking in the kitchen knows that, I think. <laughs> um, but th that's fantastic and a, and a really great idea. Um, now, you've been writing, as you said, for 20 Three Almost years? 24 years 24 now. years yeah, 23, now. I guess it is 23, yes. Okay. So. Uh, over 20 titles, including yes. uh, an August release coming up of Girl Talk, Guy Talk. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, um, what first inspired you to become a writer? Well... Because being a writer, as yeah. everybody, everybody out here in the creative arts knows, being a writer is not something you do, it's just something you are. It's in you. So what, what let you know that that was and what was in you? Actually, I didn't want to write. I'm a mathematician. My degree is mathematics. And everyone kept saying, oh, you should write about all these great things you do with your children. They have so much fun. My children come to your house. They love what you have to do. They love what you're sharing. And when my first started college and my youngest started preschool that September, and yes, there is that big of an age spread <laughs> between the five, I started to write. And then I went to a writer's conference and people wanted me to send things in. And I, unlike a lot of people, I started getting published right away. And that was just Which is a blessing amazing. in and of itself. It, it is. It can be a daunting road for some. That is a, that is a real blessing. Um, now, 
I understand that you, one of your early books, your stories of faith and courage from the home front, won the Military Writers Associate Society of America's uh, gold medal. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about that book and about that experience in general. Yes. Well, my husband, my late husband was Coast Guard. My son served in the Air Force. My father was in the Army Air Corps in World War II that became our Air Force. Huh? So you're the only <laughs> Army guy. I was waiting for somebody. Waiting yes. for an Army guy in there. Well, my son-in-law was Army, so there you have it. <laughs> and I, there was so much military in my family, and I had a, an aunt that I was named after. I was born on her birthday. That was the town historian up in New England in Connecticut. So I grew up with a lot of history and entrenched in that. Wow. And uh, so when an editor said to me, and I did a couple books with them, you know, you should do something in our Battlefield and Blessing series. And I said, well, I don't write about the battles. I know all about the home front. That's what I would do. And he mm -hmm. says, oh, we've never done anything like it. Why wow. don't you? So, wow. You know, we forget. <laughs> service members and veterans forget sometimes. Uh, I have a, a son in the Army. I have a former Marine as a son. Uh, our daughter's in the Air Force. Um, uh, you know, and um, we sometimes forget that a lot of the work being done is being done by the wives and the moms and the girlfriends and the home front. Yes. And, and that's an important topic to touch on. And then, of course, a lot of the work being done when we come home. Yes. Is, is laid out in front of all oh, y'all. There is. And, and this book covers 1755 till 2012 with a true daily story every wow. day for a year of what happened on the home front during all the American war times. Wow. And so I did a lot of research, so did my co-author at historic societies. When I went up and down the whole East Coast, up to John Adams Library up in uh, Massachusetts, down to wow. here to Seminole Indians and their war times and what happened with them. My co-author lived in Iowa. She went down to San Antonio to the Alamo, she, so we got a lot of things and found a lot of the historic documents mm -hmm. and letters with these women and diaries and journals to get true authentic stories and almost wow. every day has an excerpt from something or a quote and that's why the end notes are also quite thick in that book. Mm -hmm. But it is, it's a, it's a, I think it's a fascinating subject for people and it's also I think important um, right now in this time in American history, um, we are, are feathering off one of America's longest, uh, well, not one of, now officially, America's longest war. I think it's important yeah. that military families know that throughout history they're not alone. That mm -hmm. There's a large group in the, in the experiences and lamentations and the hard work is some things change and some things just don't. It's always a battle on the home front. Uh, for the hearts and minds of family. So thank you so much for that and, what, and your work with that. <laughs> that. That means so much to me personally uh, that somebody's doing that work. Um, now, uh, Raising a Young Modern Day Princess. Now, I understand this is part of a collection. It is also Raising a Modern Day Princess. Yes. Um, your co-author worked on some other things. So let's talk about that uh, book and then about mm -hmm. the collection as, as a whole. What was what were the goals and what, what are you trying right. to, what message are you sending with these? We worked with Focus on the Family and Tyndale Publishing, and mm -hmm. the goal was really to go beyond that outward, just dressing pretty as a little princess and wanting everything to be about me for girls. That goes into women often wanting everything to be about me, to having that sense of more of a virtuous woman that wants to be part of the kingdom of God and wanting to serve other people and wanting to develop the true inner beauty that we really need. And so the one year My Princess Devotion that goes along with that starts with the preschoolers for the girls to apply a great principle every day. And with the young modern day princess we're developing the fruit of the spirit of kindness, generosity, love, joy, service, these types of things. And the modern day princess that my two friends worked on is to go beyond that extension and particularly back up a little and help the girls who maybe have had very bad experiences of abuse or bullying or anything else get beyond that to rediscover their identity and who they really are as a woman of beauty and value. That's a lot of heady stuff. Yes. It really, really, it truly is. Um, uh, uh, we're we're going to see, sometimes they touch me. 
I have a tiny heart. It's, anyway. Um, and we're going to shout out to our princess, uh, to Briar Rose, named uh, accordingly, uh, who found that in her, found that strength in her, and is now serving. And that's what she does. So she'll tell you, right, real princesses don't wear tiaras, they wear medals. Because they're <laughs> rock stars. So thank you for that, too. Uh, princesses, favorite Disney princess, we're in Florida. Who's your favorite Disney princess? Favorite Disney princess, wow. That's a difficult one. What do I identify with? I like Belle, who was oblivious to life around her and liked books. <laughs> but she was not oblivious to finding true courage and true beauty in another person. She didn't Amazing. look at the outside part. It is. It's fantastic. And, and uh, we, we love princesses like Belle because that's how we make our living. They go into bookstores and they buy books. So, uh, okay, so uh, you have written over 20 books. 25. 25 books. Uh, been writing for almost 24 years, been a mathematician, <laughs> okay? So, two things you haven't done, two things that are on your bucket list that you need to do. Wow. A another book is a book on blessings and a math book. I have not done a math book yet. I've done a math book. She's a mathematician. That's math right, book. but I have one in the chain of, of things to do, and actually I already have a publisher who doesn't want to contract it till next year, so... That's a very real possibility to do hands-on math to fill the gap of what we don't learn in math in school. And another now, math for, are you looking at doing a math book, math for us or math for little ones or where do you the want to? The elementary, ages, elementary ages, where they're often not getting things like benchmark estimation. So I know how much when I'm pouring, is it a serving size or not? How far does it how many steps to get to the mailbox, things like this, which helps you in when I'm going to park a car, what's the distance really like? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. These things that so aren't usually covered. Just, it, yes, there's more than just numerical mathematics. You're really teaching problem solving it's, mathematics. Yes. And three dimensional. And practical. Yes, practical in fact, and we three dimensional want, mathematics. Mm -hmm. is, it, those of you who don't know, when you get older and, and sometimes in college and you start taking different math courses and math tests, a lot of times you'll see a lot of spatial mathematics problems mm -hmm. that ma many students aren't prepared for. They're prepared for 2 plus 2 equals 4, and then they get through their <laughs> algebra, and they get through some of their, their, their basic geometry, but you put them in a living space, mm -hmm. and numbers start to break down. So that's a really neat that's lesson. That's right, and there'll be a lot more lessons like that that would be covered in such a book. So I do want to hit that math because that's part of me. I'd probably do it with my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's an educator. And then I really want to keep going back to China. That was my lifelong dream, and I went this spring wow. with an all-expense-paid trip from a company in China that brought me over there to do an imagination tour with three other people from the U.S. And we worked with children on inspiring creativity. We worked with the adults who work with the children, the parents, the wow. educators, the camp directors. And I, I want to do more. And next time, I'd like to also go into the home churches. Wow, that is fantastic. <laughs> You know what? We are so glad that Karen came on the show. That's what we do here. We create, aspire, and inspire others to do the same. Um, the creative arts is, is, is underrated, guys. It's hard to make a living, but it's an underrated, uh, it's who we are inside as creators. So what's coming down the pipeline for you coming right up? What are you working on next? I know we have a release date coming up um, for the next, for uh, Girl Talk, Guy Talk. Yes, that's for oh. teenagers. And so, yeah, I'm working with the teens on helping them build their communication skills because the breakdown of family is often tied to not having good communication skills. Our texting and everything else cuts off our really having deep connections with people. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be working on that. And what I want to do more is get more into the community and other places on my speaking to work more with bringing out the concepts that I have in a lot of these books to help people use them. That's fantastic. And I do understand you've been doing a lot of public speaking of yes. late and, um, and inspirational speaking. So um, is that something that you are particularly keen on? You really enjoy that? Talking, getting to talk about the concepts in your books. Yeah, I do enjoy that. I, I enjoy because then I get to connect heart to heart with people. Mm -hmm. I get to go out there, meet them, see what their real needs are and see what else I can write that might help them and bless them. Now, as an inspirational writer in particular, um, what would you say has been probably the highlight of, of your writing career? What's been just that, that moment when you said, oh, this is why I do what I do? 
you know, there are the ups and downs everywhere, and some of it is just connecting with people. You know, getting a letter from a child who said, hey, I read this story you had in a magazine, and I asked my dad, and he said it's really true. This was about an oral surgeon's son that read how I wrote a story about my daughter having 14 stitches in her tongue, and she found he found out that you really can have that happen. Uh, and ow. <laughs> I know it was uh, really that hurt, that hurt tough at the time, yeah. Wow. She just gave me a, just, oh, ow. So just hearing from the readers is such a blessing. I, I would say one of my big wows of, was, of course, going to China and meeting the, and really getting to know people in China because I was really interacting with Chinese people. and That's fantastic. Went to, uh, you know, a home there and uh, where I learned to make dumplings, uh, another form wow. of bread, you might say, filled bread. Yes. And had a great time with that. So I've gotten to meet people and go places that I never would have expected to. I've spoken in Russia. I've spoken in Malaysia. I've been on radio while I was in Australia. All sorts of things that I never dreamed I That's would do. That's amazing. It really is. Guys, check out the gift of bread online. We're going to put links down below in our description as well as Raising a Young Modern Day Princess and so many others. We're going to put some links down below to Karen Whiting's social media platforms and places where you can find Karen. And just send her a note if you've read one of these great books and you want to just send her a note and tell her how great it was. She <laughs> likes that. Look. Also, guys, leave reviews. We're writers. We live on stars. <laughs> write, write reviews. Leave stars. we got to wrap it up, folks. As we do, we want to say thank you to our friends over at Something Unique Magazine, Space Coast Comics, Wordfire Press, Famous Faces and Funnies, Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason, and all of our fantastic featured authors and artists who can support the show month to month to month and let us do what we do with the fantastic creators we do it with. I'm G.W. Pomacher. We've been hanging with... Karen Whiting, the author of Gift of Bread and other great books. So get down in the links below. Check those out. Remember, folks, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Oh, 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 oh,